Was on, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ross. I like games, and today we are opening another Keyforge deck. You see, I was very excited about Keyforge, and I thought, well, I could buy a deck or two, and then I thought, no, I could buy several decks. So I did buy several decks. We have already opened one of these decks on the channel, but I think we need to open another one. So let's get rolling. Now, I did open it purely to scan, so that I could have the card scans up on a separate screen while I open to make life easier. And this is the best name of anyone I've got so far. She that reprehensively bows to fire. That's a cool name. Compared to my other ones, which are going to be honest, right? You get a randomized name when you buy a Keyforge deck. The first two decks I opened, one I did stream, the other one I didn't stream. I didn't have chance and I wanted to play a game. So I needed two decks. <laughs> So she who reprehensibly bows to fire. I think that's a cool name, ladies and gentlemen. I think that's a cool name. So we have got Dis, Mars, and Logos, or Logos, as our houses du jour. So let's have a go, shall we? As before, we'll split up the houses so we can open them kind of one at a time. So... Let's start off with Mars. And I played with a game with a Mars deck the other day. I quite enjoyed it. So we start off here with Jammer Pack. Jammer Pack is... I mean, it's got the Ember bonus, which is quite nice. And it's an upgrade. You put it on a creature and your opponent's keys cost two more. Yeah. Stop some forging keys. And even when they forge a key, they've got to pay eight rather than six. With the Ember bonus, that sounds like a fun card to me. Zilix Marauder, I'm going to be honest with you, ladies and gents. Zilly Marauder, I'm a little bit confused. Two power, zero armor makes it a very underwhelming character in terms of attacking and defending. But you get plus one for each ember on it. And when you play it, you capture one ember for each friendly, ready Mars creature. So if we've got enough Mars creatures in this deck, then we can potentially use this to capture a bunch of ember and become a beast. We have one copy of, how do you pronounce this one? Uxlix the Zookeeper. Again, two power, one armor is not particularly exciting. But it's elusive, so the first time it's attacked, you take no damage. That's quite nice. And when you reap, you put an enemy creature into your archives. And if that creature leaves the archives, it puts into its owner's hand instead. So I can basically get rid of some of their creatures. That's quite disruptive. That sounds fun. We have one copy of Ulig Mega Mouth. Three powers slightly better. When you fight or reap, you get to use a friendly non-Mars creature. I mean, you, you get to use extra creatures. That sounds cool. It means I can be Mars for a turn, but I can use a character other than Mars. That I cannot be the only one that thinks that sounds good. Okay, I'm liking these Mars creatures in this deck. This seems kind of cool. So we've got John Smith. Two power, zero armor. It's elusive again. And when you fight or reap, you ready a non-agent Mars creature. Well, looking at all of my other creatures so far, none of them are agents. So between John Smith and Mega Mouth, that basically gives us two extra creatures a turn. We have one copy of Grabber Jammer. Four power, one armor is quite nice stats-wise. And your opponent's keys cost one more. And when you fight or reap, you capture one ember. So actually, putting this all together, I quite like it. We've got a couple different ones that increase the cost of my opponent's keys. And we've got a couple different ones that capture ember. Now, that's all of my creatures. So we have five creatures total. This Zilix could become quite cool. So what else do we have here? We have a copy of, in, in fact... Even though it's a rare, we have two copies of Invasion Portal. It's an action. Discard cards on the top of your deck until you discard a Mars creature or run out of cards. If you discard a Mars creature this way, put it into your hand. And I've got a bunch of Mars creatures, most of which look pretty good. So I'm loving the kind of synergy we're seeing in the Mars part of this deck. I'm quite enjoying it. We've got Crystal Hive, a location. For the remainder of the turn, you gain one ember each time a creature reaps. Cool. 
That, that sounds pretty good, to be honest with you. We've got an action EMP blast. Each Mars creature and each robot creature is stunned. Each artifact is destroyed. So I probably want to use that on a turn when I've not got too much Mars out. One action battle fleet. Reveal any number of Mars cards from your hand. For each card revealed, draw one. That, that could be good as draw power. And one copy of Ammonia Cloud, an action which deals free damage to each creature, that being mine and my opponents. That seems pretty good. I like that I can capture, I like that I can increase the cost of keys there. I'm going to be honest, I'm quite liking the Mars ones. Let's move on to Logo, shall we? And we start off with free copies of Titan Mechanic. We've got free, ladies and gentlemen. Free Titan Mechanic. Six power, zero armor. While it's on a flank, each key costs minus one ember. Now, clearly, I cannot have three Titan Mechanics on the flank. I can only have two. But if I get two of them out, they could potentially bring my keys down to a four cost. Bearing in mind I've got Mars creatures that increase the cost of my opponent's keys and the six power. I'm quite liking that. All right. A copy of Mother. Now, Mother's a card I've already got in a couple of decks here. And, I mean, look, it's got it's got five power, which is more than average. And it's got a lovely little skill here, whereby when I'm refilling my hands during the draw cards phase, I get an extra card. That seems fine. I like that. We've got Quixo the Adventurer here, which free power, skirmish, and when I fight, I draw a card. It's all right. It's not a stunning card. It's not a great card. It's a fairly standard card, but you know, it's all right. We have one copy of Doc Bookton. Five power is quite nice, and when you reap, you draw a card. So between Doc and Quixo, we got a little bit of draw power. Not amazing. Now, Wild Wormhole, I got in a different deck, and I've really been enjoying playing this. When you play it, you just play the top card of your deck. If it's a creature, you get to put it down. If it's an action, you get to use it. I like Wild Wormhole a lot. And you just gets an Ember bonus as well. I played this the other day. I played a Wild Wormhole with an Ember bonus. Got a really good action with an Ember bonus. I mean, that was really cool. We have a copy of Phase Shift. You may play one non-Logos card this turn. That's really cool, because one of my Mars creatures allows me to play a non-Mars creature, and this lets me play a non-Logos card. So I get to mix up the houses quite a lot here. We see two copies of Lab Work, which just archive a card. It's fine. I mean, look, they both have an Ember bonus, so that's pretty nice. Maybe I'm not seeing, and if you want to pop in the comment section about archiving, I'm not loving archiving enough at the moment, I don't think. One copy of Fogify, which also has an Ember bonus, and stops your opponent using creatures to fight next turn. Against creature-heavy decks, very nice. And one copy of Effervescent Principle, which each player loses half of their Ember, and you gain one chain. I eh, probably need to be careful when I play that one. So there are my Logos cards for this particular deck. And now, this I like. I like Untamed. I want a bear deck. I want a deck with so many bears. But this is one of the most interesting houses I've found so far. Lots of disruption. So we start off with the Terror. Five power is good. And if your opponent has no Ember, you gain two. So if you can draw that early enough or right after your opponent's out of Ember, that's pretty cool. And bearing in mind, some of my Mars creatures can capture Ember. We have one copy of Succubus here. During that draw card step, your opponent refills a hand to one less. Remember, one of my logos allowed me to fill Mother to one more card when I draw, so that's pretty nice. We have one copy of Snudge. Four power, and when I fight or reap, I return an artifact or flank creature to my opponent's hand. Like I've said, this is very disruptive. We have a copy of, sorry, I lied to you, two copies of Shula here. Four power is quite nice, and if my opponent's got four ember or more, I steal one. That's quite cool. We have, is it Shaffler? Shaffles. 
Oh, Shuffle sounds kind of cute. Two power is bad. There's no way around that. Two power is not good. But at the end of my turn, my opponent loses an ember. If my opponent's got six ember and is ready to forge a key, at the end of my turn, they lose one. They can no longer forge a key. Not to mention, of course, that I've got some other disruptive cards here as well, which is hurting. We have a copy of Pit Demon. I can just steal an ember if I want to. So maybe I steal it and then my opponent loses one at the end of their turn. Then they can't forge a key. And five power is quite nice. And then into the actions, we have a copy of Soul Snatcher. It's a rare. Each time a creature is destroyed, its owner gains one ember. Ooh. That's interesting. And another rare here, a copy of Screaming Cave. What does Screaming Cave do? Shuffle your hand and discard pile into your deck. So essentially, you just completely reset your hand... And then at the end of your turn, you just refill to seven like normal. Eight if there's a mother down. We have a copy of Free Fates. Destroy the three most powerful creatures. And it's got an ember bonus. Again, just play it when your opponent <laughs> doesn't have, you know, has the most powerful creatures on hand. One copy of Gongoozle, which again has an ember bonus. And I deal three damage to a creature. If it's destroyed, my opponent discards a card from their hand. Quite nice. And we finish off with a copy of Fear. Return an enemy creature to its opponent's hand. So this is going for the disruption quite nicely. This seems like a fun deck. Now again, as with all of these decks, we need to play. And I'm going to be doing some gameplay videos on my channel. But we've got some Capturing Ember. We've got some Disruption. And we seem to have some pretty nice creatures to attack with. This seems like fun, but I suppose, ladies and gentlemen, as of all, we'll have to wait and see. But tell me what you think of my deck in the comment section, ladies and gentlemen. Go nuts, but please do remember to be nice. As a side note, this deck has four rares. Two for Dis, two for Mars, and none for Logos. I've seen some with as few as two. I've seen some with a lot more. And I do like the name. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossie. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PT... No, Wossie Plays.